church? Good morning. How's everybody today? Good, good, good. Hey, in case you didn't notice, I am not Pastor Jerry. He's not here this morning because he had a bit of a setback. He is hospitalized uh, with a blood clot issue. It is hopefully being resolved. That's what we're praying for and that he'll be back next week. Um, he asks for your continued prayers as he navigates his cancer treatment and for Lisa. Gratefully, she is here today. Um, so due to his absence, though, we will be celebrating communion next Sunday and continuing on the journey of Moses with Pastor Jerry. Um, so today um, we'll do a journey together, and I hope that's okay. I want to thank you for allowing me to share the message with you this morning. In case you don't know, my name is Cindy Rednauer. I work here at the church, and I do... Um, my husband and I together do uh, the youth here at the church. If you're new to our church, I want to extend a warm welcome on behalf of myself and this congregation and everybody up here and offer you the gift of a beautiful coffee mug. We love to mug our new guests, so please uh, make sure to grab one. It's, um, and friends online, welcome. We're so glad that you're here today. It is great to be worshiping with you this morning. So if you would please stand and join us in singing our opening song. That would be great.
good breaks, good breaks, good breaks, good breaks, good breaks. No, how about you sit next to me, okay? That'd be great, that'd be great. Hi, 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 Brinley, come on up, how are you? Here comes Presley, hi. Here comes Shania and Hayden too. Hi guys, how, how's everybody this morning? Are we awake? Are we awake? Hey, are we awake? Are we awake? I can't, are you, no, 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 no? Well, I was wondering, hey, can you guys tell me, I was wondering, where do you find Jesus? Up in the air. Up in the air, up in, your, in our hearts, in our lives, very good. Very, very good. What about um, like through acts of kindness? Do we, do we see Jesus in acts of kindness? Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, stop, 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 stop. Sit. Okay. How about, how about when we're at church, do we see Jesus here? Yeah. We hope so, right? Well, not, he could be, huh? He's everywhere. Yeah, well, that was, a, no, that's Moses. <laughs> how about our parents? Do we see Jesus in our parents sometimes? No? I hope you do. What, oh. So tell me, what do you like best about yourself? What do you like best about yourself? What do you like? What do you like about yourself the best? What do you like best about yourself? Huh? My family. Your family. That's wonderful. What about you, Marcus? What do you like best about yourself? You love everything about yourself? That's good. What do you like about yourself, Hunter? Oh, that's cool. That's good. Yeah. What do you like about yourself, Shania? How about your, hmm? Yeah, very good. Very good. Your voice. Well, do you know that Jesus created you in his image? So all those things that you like about yourself, Jesus gave them to you because they're your gifts and you all have gifts. And if you follow Jesus's teachings that you find in your Bible, like you just talked about, Hunter, and learn about in your Sunday school class, um, and at home, hopefully, well, that's where you can find Jesus, right? And I want you to know that you can find Jesus even closer than all those places. And just like you said, J.D., where do you find Jesus? In your heart. That's right. So I want to give you this mirror. And I want you to know that when you look at yourself, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I want you to know when you look at yourself, you're reminded that Jesus made you and he loves you. And he's living in your heart. So let's say together. 1 Corinthians 3. 16. 16. Don't you know. That you yourselves. Are God's temple. And that God's spirit. Dwells in your midst. So when you take this mirror. Well, you don't have to say that part. You can, hang on, you can look at yourself and, and remember that God loves you, okay? Which one do you want? Oh, well, we gave them to the girls, sorry. Okay. Everybody, you got one? All right, I want you to take a look in the mirror. Take a look in the mirror. Everybody have one, Ryder, you have a mirror? Okay, look in the mirror. What do you see? My nose. You'll see your nose. You, I want you to see yourself that God made you just like you are because he loves you. Okay, let's say a prayer. Ready? Let's do it like the youth. Ready? Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for making me in your image and for loving me always. Amen. All right. Head to Sunday school. Behave yourselves. Have a good time. Be nice to your teachers. Be kind to your teachers. I, don't, I think there used to be a thing here. Yeah. Because it's a review. Yeah. Well, it's a reflection. Uh-oh. <laughs> Is everybody all right? All right. Okay. <laughs> all right. Goodness gracious. Okay. Would you um, stand, please, and join us for the next song we're going to sing, At Your Name.
Will you pray with me, please? Father God, you are such an awesome, amazing, wonderful God. And we do love to praise your name. Not just here on Sunday mornings, but every day. We can take each minute of every day and praise you, and it wouldn't be enough to express how much we love you, how much we worship you, and to let you know how thankful we are for all the many blessings that you have given us. I know sometimes it seems like things are so hard, we wonder where you are. Have you forgotten us? Did we lose our way? But Lord, you're always there. You don't change. Sometimes we step away. Sometimes we look away. But you're always there for us, Lord. And for that, we thank you so very much. And we look forward to the day that we will be with you in eternity and we can worship you constantly. That will be such an amazing thing. Father, we thank you so much for each person here today, in person and online. We've given you our hearts. We ask that you be with those who don't yet know you. We know we have a job to do to bring others into your home so that they can know the wonderful blessings as we do. Father, we ask that you be with those around the world who are suffering and going through hard times, whether it be because of weather, because of war, because of illness. And Lord, we especially lift up our Pastor Jerry this morning. We all love him so much. We want only the best for him. And we'd like him to be with us again. Please put your healing touch on his life. Lord, there's so many things that we could be thankful for. But in your word, you've taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, hi. Boy, everybody sounds so good this morning. So good. Hey, maybe Pastor Jerry's listening online. Let's tell him hi. Ready? One, two, three. Hey, Pastor Jerry. That's right. Sorry, I'm going, I do like him. I'm swimming against the, the current here. <laughs> oh, goodness. So, um, Pastor Jerry's been doing a series on Moses, and we're going to let him continue that series. Um, I have a different message for you this morning, and I want to know, what do you see when you see Jesus? Just think about that for a minute. Well, when I see Jesus, I see him as a man. Has anyone been watching or have watched that series, The Chosen? Anybody seen that? Yeah, yeah. Um, seeing Jesus portrayed as a man who laughs, <laughs> um, he enjoys his friends, he takes walks alone to gather his thoughts, and he fixes things. You know, he was a carpenter. My husband is a fix-it guy. I mean, Chuck, I swear, he can fix anything. So just this weekend alone, he had to put a hot water tank in. He had to put in a new toilet. I mean, it's been like, he goes, what's Labor Day? I thought it was a day of rest. And I said, no, 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 it's labor. See, you got to know. <laughs> but seeing Jesus like that makes him so human, so relatable. I read the Bible, and I laugh with him. I feel his frustration, his sadness. When you're reading that um, prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, the, the anguish. And I love that he loves children. I can see Jesus just like this. And in Mark 9, 36, 37, it says, taking the child in his arms, he said to them, whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me does not just welcome me, but the one who sent me. 
But do you know where I struggle to see Jesus? And maybe you do too. Seeing this man that I love being flogged, unfairly tried, hanging on a cross. It breaks my heart. I have a hard time seeing this sacrifice for me, for you. This is when I have to see God. This is when, in his humanity, he suffered for me, and as God gave me life with him eternally. When folks struggle to accept Jesus into their lives, I think it's this Jesus with which they struggle. Why would someone do this? Why would this be required? How could God suffer, and why would he do that? Well, John 3, 17 says, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. By sacrificing himself on the cross, he took the punishment for all our sins at once. Just let that sink in a minute. As he hung on that cross, all our sins came upon him. He cried out in anguish, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But God had not, but that's when he felt that sin come upon him. Let me ask you a question. How much would you do for your children or your grandchildren? What would you sacrifice to save them if they were in dire straits? I read a, yeah, exactly, anything. I read a story. There's a heroic mother in China. Maybe you heard this story. She sacrificed herself so that her children could survive an apartment fire. With no other way to get them out, the mother threw a sheet out the window so strangers could use it to catch her children. She tossed her nine-year-old son and then her three-year-old daughter, daughter out of the fifth floor window. Envision that. The children sustained some injuries, but they are expected to be okay. But sadly, the mother did not survive. She was found lying unconscious beside the window. She sacrificed herself so her children might live. Sound familiar? And Tony Dungy tells this story of sacrifice. When I was a junior in high school, my dad took a job in a city around 60 miles away from us. He knew my sister and I wanted to finish high school where we started, so he made the decision to commute, driving a total of 120 miles a day. I didn't realize until later what a big sacrifice that was for him. We as humans sacrifice for our children, and God sacrificed for us. And Jesus has done so much more than that. God gave us Jesus, his son, fully man and fully God, so that God, so God, so that we would not perish but have everlasting life. And it tells us that in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, you guys know this one, that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. All we have to do is accept the sacrifice. All we have to do is say yes to Jesus. In Acts 4, 12, salvation is found in no one else. There is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. What name is that? That's right. And you know what? Once we do, Jesus does all the rest. In Titus 3, 5, he saved us not because of righteous things that we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. He comes and lives in, in you. In your spirit, the Holy Spirit comes to change you. Sometimes that's scary for us, isn't it, to think about change? But I tell you, in 1 Corinthians 3.16, don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? That's what I just did with the kids. They need to know that starting young. You know, I can look back at myself 45 years ago. Yeah, 45 years ago. That's hard to say. But I, I was a mess, guys. I was making bad decisions, bad choices, and sometimes not even realizing it. As I look back at myself then, I don't even know that girl. Jesus has changed me. He helped me grow. He helped me to be more kind, more gentle, more compassionate, more loving, more patient. <laughs> that one was a hard one for me. And an exercising in self-control. 
<laughs> and that one too. Let me tell you, that one I could have never done on my own. That was all God. Having um, the ability to talk with God and know that he hears me, that he understands, and that he will still respond even all these years later. You know why Jesus hasn't come back yet? Because he doesn't want to lose you, you and all of you. In 2 Peter 3, 9, he says, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness, but instead he's patient with you. There's that word, right? Not wanting anyone to perish, not anyone, but everyone to come to repentance. You who haven't accepted him into your life yet, maybe you are here in this room, or maybe you're listening and watching online, or maybe you'll hear this on Facebook or somewhere sometime in the future. And as you hear, I hope you will listen. Jesus loves you and does not want you to be left behind. He does not want anyone to perish. And yet he will return. And we need to be ready. He is calling you. All you have to do is listen and accept. Let me tell you a story about myself. I remember... This happened a long time ago. I was very young, probably in my late teens, so 19 or 20. And at that time in my life, I was drinking and partying, and I really thought that I was living. I thought that was life, man. But this night, it was very late at night, well, really early morning, you know, like 2 or 3 in the morning. <laughs> and I was so lost, and I was so sad, and I was alone, and I was sitting in my small apartment, and I had the radio on, and this song came on. And this song sang to my heart. It used my name. I heard the line, Cindy, what are you doing? I don't remember the tune, but later I tried to find out about this song. The radio station said they did not have a song like that. Kind of freaked me out. And I've never been able to find it, ever. I wasn't drinking that night. I was not doing any other mind-altering chemicals that night. But I know Jesus sang to me somehow. He called to me. And you know what I did? Well, I walked to a church later that evening. It was a little Baptist church that I had attended just a few years earlier. I stood there, and I saw the lights in the window, and I heard the music, and I knew they were there. But I turned around. I really felt like if I walked into that church that I would not be welcomed. That's how wrong I was. I finally did, gratefully, find my way back to Jesus. I kept hearing that call, not in my ear, but I kept hearing it in my heart. And if you're that person, if you believe that if you turned your life over to Jesus, he will not accept you, if you believe that if you walk into that church, you will not be welcomed, you couldn't be more wrong. Am I right, church? Jesus loves you, and the church, the church of Jesus Christ loves you. Are we perfect? <laughs> far, far from it. But Jesus is perfect, and he perfectly loves you. You know, the God who laughed and played and worked and had friends in this world, the God who died on the cross for you, he loves you. That has not changed, and he does not want you to miss the opportunity to spend eternity in paradise. Maybe you're that person that uh, you don't believe uh, that you're an eternal being. Uh, maybe you think that when you die, that's it, game over. And I believe that, that idea is a good lie from Satan. The one who would love for you to believe that there is nothing after this life. His goal is to keep us separated from the love of God eternally. Listen, have you ever been to a funeral, you know, with an open casket or been with someone who's just passed? I have. When you look at that body, you realize that something's missing. They don't look the same. That life force that actually made them them has moved on, but it is not gone. It exists in the spiritual realm, not as a ghost, not as an energy, but as that person. The life essence of that person continues to exist, and you will exist too. You will continue, and where you will continue is your choice, heaven or hell. Heaven, a place where God is. The place where there will be no sorrow, no pain, or hurt, or addictions. But God's love will abound. 
just like Cindy prayed, we will be able to be with God in this wonderful, beautiful place. Or you can choose hell, eternally separated from the love of God. Here in this life, you get to be human. You get to experience humanity in all of its joy and sadness and pain, to experience life. And Jesus did too. There's only one place that we can experience humanness, and that is here on earth. And there is only one place that we can fully experience the love of God, and that is in heaven. And we get to choose here and now how we want to spend eternity. Marilyn, can we play that video? Uh, I'm going to set the scene. Nicodemus, he's a Pharisee who, believe, who becomes a believer after secret conversations with Jesus. We know it works. <laughs> Hang on, she said. It's coming. <laughs> don't you love technology? It works when you don't want it to, and then when you do, it just kind of goes bleh. Even yeah, more, than more than that. Do you remember when the children of Israel complained against God and against Moses in the wilderness of Paran? Yes, yes. They wanted to return to Egypt and they cursed the manna that God sent them. And then they were bitten by serpents and they were dying. But God made a way for them to be healed. Moses lifted the bronze serpent in the desert and people only needed to look at it. So will the Son of Man be lifted up, so that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Our people are not dying from snake bites. They're dying from taxation and oppression. I'm sorry to disappoint you. But I did not come to deliver the people from Rome. Then from what? From sin. From spiritual death. God loves the world in this way. That he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So this has nothing to do with Rome. It's all about sin. God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, Nicodemus. He sent him to save it through him. It's as simple as Moses' serpent on the pole. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already. Have you ever, have you ever heard anything like this before? When I met, when I met Lilith, Lilith, Mary, Mary that, day, that day, I told my, I told my wife and my students that she, she was beyond human aid. Only God, only God could, have could have healed her. And then I saw and then her. I saw her. Healed. Here, here you are. The healer. I, my whole life, I wondered if I would see this day. Jesus. He says, it's simple. It sounds so simple that I think sometimes we reject it just because it is that simple. We say, there has to be something else. What's the catch? Living life here is hard. Well, why should we have to do that? Why can't we just go ahead and move on to heaven? Well, people, exactly. Why should we? Because we get to experience all that God has for us to shape us and grow us. Do we not help to shape and grow our children? Do they not need guidance and discipline? Has anyone ever read that book, Lord of the Flies? It was required reading when I was in high school. 
Well, for those of you who haven't, that's about a group of British boys who are marooned on an uninhabited island after their plane has been shot down in the midst of a war. The pilot is killed, and they have to learn to survive and govern themselves. There's no guidance, there's no adult, there's no wisdom, not from anyone. They are all on their own. And ultimately, two factions arise, and they become feral, and in fact, they kill. And when they are rescued, they realize how much they've lost. Without God, without the guidance and discipline that we get from the Bible, our world would be in much worse shape than it already is. And do we think it's in bad shape? Yeah. But we each need to work out our own salvation and realize that God is love. In Philippians 2, 12 and 13, it says, therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear, and they don't mean scared fear, with respect and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. He created humans. He created Adam, and then he put Adam in the garden, and he created Eve in the garden. He loves you and me, and he wants us to spend eternity in that love. Is it easy? You know what? It's so easy, it's hard. We make it hard. But know this. Your life depends on your decision. Will you accept Jesus into your heart and life? Bridge the gap of sin between humans and God? The choice is yours. And I pray that you make the choice to follow Jesus. Amen? Amen. Okay, we can bring everybody back up. Let's do this thing. We're going to sing our soul on fire. We're on fire, right? Let's stand up and let's sing it loud, people. Ready, Jimmy? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that is not the answer I want. <laughs>
Yeah, soul on fire. That's the way we need to be, right? That is absolutely the way we need to be. I need a bulletin. Do we have one up here somewhere? Yeah, right here in front of me. <laughs> um, so next steps. In your bulletin, you'll see. I don't know if anybody's noticed, but has anybody been reading our little welcomes here? Every week, there's something different. We're all welcome here, no matter what we are and who we are, right? Um, notice the community connections is uh, collecting things for our homeless and uh, for our home less population and all of these dates in September you know the church calendar starting to heat up now guys everything's starting to happen Methodist men right Jim it's happening again um, that's in here um, we're gonna have teachers blessing of the hands next Sunday um, pastor intends to be here that's our prayer and um, and uh, at both services on the 12th we're gonna have membership Sunday we have uh, membership certificates and if you have not yet and want to join the Global Methodist Church, uh, please let me know. <laughs> <You hear that? laughs> um, and there's going to be a breakfast gathering between that uh, blessing of the hands, and there's going to be an ice cream social after the, um, after the uh, yeah, new member class. Thank you. So if we could, let's together pray. Lord God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to worship you, to know you, to get to know you better, and to welcome you into our hearts and our homes. May God bless you this day as you go out into the world and be a light for Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you.